Hi, I'm an American. We look like this too. I'm a, I'm a brown. I'm two types. My dad is Indian and my mom is Iranian. So technically I'm Pakistani. I'm Punjabi and a comedian. So puns are literally my jobby. My full name is Omid Nayab Singh. Omid means hope because my parents were hoping I would be an engineer. <laughs> Nayab means rare, and it's rare to find an Indian Iranian who's not an engineer. <laughs> Singh means lion, and they're still lying and telling their friends I'm an engineer. <laughs> I'm uh, not a scary brown, just a hairy one. I, I shaved this morning, I really don't know what to do. Covered in fur, except for right here. God was very cruel when he came to picking where my hair goes. He was up there, he was like, you know what? His ass, super important. <laughs> we don't have time for this. Uh, I fly a lot. I don't uh, do anything scary when I go to the airport, even though I could. <laughs> but I do like to see how far I can walk away from my luggage. <laughs> my record right now is two terminals. I was on a plane recently. I was not the scariest person on the plane. The pilot was. We were flying from Seattle down to Los Angeles. Halfway through the flight, pilot gets on the intercom and he goes, bing. We're uh, gonna have to land the plane in San Francisco. We're out of fuel. Bing. That's all he said. That was the whole announcement. So nonchalant, like we just ran out of pretzels. <laughs> Immediately, the lady who was sitting next to me, she turns to me and goes, this is bullshit. <laughs> the pilot is gonna land the plane early? I have a connector. <laughs> if he lands the plane in San Francisco, I'm gonna miss my connecting flight, and this is gonna ruin my entire day. I turned back to her and I was like, hey, the uh, pilot just said that we're out of fuel. <laughs> if he doesn't land the plane right now, you're gonna miss the connection to the rest of your life. <laughs> 20 minutes later, pilot gets back on the intercom and he goes, bing. You know what? We're gonna go for it. <laughs> Like, we're gonna go for it? As if this turned into some fourth and goal situation. And he's trying to take us to the playoffs next week. Immediately, everybody on the plane started cheering for the pilot. They were like, yay! He's gonna go for it! That's the only time I ever thought about taking over a plane. You just read the news the next day. Terrorist saves 200 lives. <laughs> but I'm happy to be in Vegas. I love being in Las Vegas. I like gambling. My favorite game is will I still be playing when the waitress comes back with my drink? <laughs> Isn't that the worst when you lose all your money then you gotta stand five feet away from the table, wait for a $200 Bud Light? <laughs> I don't have any kids, even though I look like a father of five. I don't know how that happened. I have an older sister. She's doing the whole family thing. She married a Peruvian Indian. 
She is Indian Persian. They just had a baby boy. He came out medium spicy. <laughs> and now she's pregnant with her second kid. She's got another little chicken in her tandoori. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> I was their uh, officiant at their wedding. And if you've never been to an Indian wedding before, take my advice, wear comfortable shoes because they're five days long. And if you need to know how to dance at an Indian wedding, there's three moves. First one is with your shoulders, and it looks like this. It's like, are you hungry? And then you gotta pretend there's another person, and they have to say, I guess I'm hungry. <laughs> and then it goes back to you, and you're like, let's go see the buffet. Everybody try it. Give me one, give me one, give me one. Boom, you got it, okay. Second move is the head nod, and it looks like this. It's uh, beautiful people over there. Oh, beautiful people <laughs> over there. And then the last one's very pandemic friendly. It's, uh, are my hands clean? My hands are clean. Are my hands clean? My hands are clean. And then you just combine it and then boom, you're Indian, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I was in New York recently. Um, I'm trying to lose some weight. My friends told me I should take Krav Maga. Have you guys heard of this? It's like Israeli self-defense. It's like karate for Jews. <laughs> but I'm not Jewish, mostly Indian. So I want to know what the Indian version is. I bet it's just a lot of like, no. <laughs> We're closed, you know? <laughs> I was in New York City recently. While I was there, I went to the gym. When I finished at the gym, I went to the subway station and I saw my train coming and I was like, ooh, I'm gonna make you train. I'm gonna get on this train. I swiped my card, I started running towards the train and the doors started to close. This is when I decided to use my nice Indian brain and come up with a plan. I was like, I'm gonna take my gym bag, I'm gonna fling it. It's gonna get stuck between the doors. <laughs> The doors aren't gonna close, they're gonna open, and I'm gonna walk on this train like a boss. That was the plan. This is what actually happened. I took my gym bag, I flung it. In the plan, I wanted to hold on to my bag, but because of the momentum, I kinda let go. And my bag went into the train, the doors closed, and I didn't make it onto the train. <laughs> For those of you who aren't following along yet, a sweaty brown guy just ran up to a train, <laughs> took a black duffel bag, threw it onto a train. So now I'm standing outside the train, I'm furious. I'm just out there, I'm screaming, my bag! People are running in opposite directions. This one brave train conductor, he went up to my bag, he picked it up, he opened the doors, he looked at me, he's like, is this yours? I was like, no. Thank you. Uh, I have a girlfriend, we've been dating for two and a half years. Which uh, means I haven't farted in two and a half years. First six months, we were not farting in front of each other. I was checking the mail four times a day. Because men, we know when we fart, we're going for statistics, right? We're going for speed, scent, sound. <laughs> Sorry, we're in an elevator. But women like to protect their farts. A woman's fart is like a wish. You're like, oh, where is it? What, where is that? You never know when a woman's gonna fart. Usually it doesn't happen during the day when the sun is out. They like to keep it tight, let all that beautiful fart pressure build throughout the day. My girlfriend likes farting in her sleep. That's her move. That's when she's most comfortable to let out a little toot. When she's being cuddled by somebody she loves and she feels safe. 
you know, classic cuddle position, one hand on a titty, you know, you squeeze it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Squeeze a little titty, she's deep in her subconscious. And a woman's fart, again, not like a man's fart. A woman's fart is singular, unexpected, sharp. It's usually just one big Right? And it smells like all the eggs. Every egg. Every egg she's ever had. Like a barrel of eggs and like a, a dozen French bulldogs. It's a, it's a mixture. That's it. Like the sniper rifle in Saving Private Ryan. You don't even... And there's so much pressure that it, it, it freaks her asshole. It like... She's been holding it in so hard. It, it wakes her up every single, every time. Every it wakes her up, and she's in a panic every time. Oh my god! Did I, did I just fart? I'm like, no. I think we're under attack. You should go outside and check. Take the flashlight with you. <laughs> Let it out. You don't need to cover your mouth at a comedy club. No, please. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you. I was going down on my girlfriend recently. Uh, you guys ever do that? You ever go down on my girlfriend? Eaten puss, that's what they call it. Eaten puss. The first time I ate puss, I, I didn't know how to do it. I, I brought a spoon. But she was Indian, so I just used my hands. So I'm down there, you know, fiddling the roof and uh, you know, DJing a little bit. Asking classic DJ questions like, how's everybody doing out there? Let me hear you make some noise. And while I was down there, I coughed. Yeah, nothing serious, just a working man's cough. Just one of these, just a <coughs> And that startled her. She was like, what was that? And I was like, it was just a cough. And she's like, what if it was COVID? And I was like, it's not COVID. She's like, how do you know it's not COVID? And I was like, because I can still smell your pussy. <laughs> and it smells great. talk about blowjobs while we're here, right? How dare you call that a job, ladies? Blowjob? I've never had a woman clock in before she goes down on me. I'm not accepting any more blowjobs, only blow volunteers or blow internships. Because if it's a job, that makes me your employer. I feel like every six months I should be able to bring you in for review. Like, sweetie, please uh, take a seat. Uh, listen, when you first started here, your head was really in the game. You came early, you stayed late. Lately though, you've been slipping. So I've gone ahead and also hired Michelle. She's gonna be helping you for the next few weeks because I'm expecting a pretty heavy load. <laughs> we both live in Los Angeles. We did something sexy. We picked our actors that it's okay to sleep with if we get the chance. That's a very LA thing to do. She picked Ryan Gosling, which is a good choice. I picked the girl in our building who was an extra on a couple TV shows. <laughs> I think I'm gonna win. 
We signed up for HelloFresh. Does anybody know what this is? HelloFresh? It's like a, if you're not signed up with HelloFresh, I can have a coupon for you for HelloFresh. Don't worry. It's like a food delivery service. It's great if you want to fight about food that's not even in front of you. Because every couple of weeks, I have to turn to my girlfriend and be like, hey, are you in the mood for chicken rigatoni? And she's like, tonight? I'm like, no, February 13th. <laughs> Do you think on February 13th you're gonna want chicken rigatoni? You're gonna have to let me know tonight. We got into a fight recently in an Uber, so we have a witness. It was a miscommunication fight. Classic Saturday night, we were going from one party to another and she turns to me and she says, hey, you didn't pick up on any of my hints. I don't wanna to go to this party. And I was like, uh, what were some of your hints? And she said, when I went, <sighs> I was like, why didn't you just say you didn't want to go to the party? She said, I don't want to just have to say it. I want you to pick up on my hints. I was like, okay, bitch. I was like, I was like let's just go home. I tried rerouting the Uber. You ever tried doing that? Cost $9,000. So we got dropped off at the second party. I was like, no, we're not even going inside. I'm calling another Uber, we're going home. We get in that second Uber, we go home, we're mad at each other, we're slamming one door, brushing teeth, all angry. She gets into bed, I get into bed. You ever try laying in bed next to someone who's mad at you? It's impossible, you feel all that adrenaline going through your body. And back in the day, people used to give this stupid piece of advice. Fix it before you go to sleep. Don't go to bed angry. Fix it before you go to sleep. Nowadays, you go to sleep any way you fucking can. Because guess what? This problem's not gonna get fixed tonight. It's actually never gonna get fixed. <laughs> it's gonna come up anytime she wants to bring it up. 10 years from now, she'll be like, remember that one time you didn't hear me when I didn't want to go to this party? And I'll be like, yeah, bitch, I do remember that shit. <laughs> so you just gotta lay there, right? You gotta lay in bed, they're laying in bed. You wanna kill them, but you can't because everybody's got a ring camera, so. You just lay there, I, I feel like a piece of corn, you know, just like don't move, don't roll over, just stay still. Because if you move, then they're gonna turn and be like, are you awake? And then you have to be like, yeah. And then they win. So you wanna be careful not to do that. That night she was like, do you wanna talk about it? And I turned to her and I was like, You're very sweet. <laughs> Before I was a comedian, I was a soccer coach for little kids, four-year-olds. You don't need to know much about soccer to coach little kids. You just have to not touch kids. <laughs> the main thing that they wanted us to teach the kids was that you never touch the ball with your hands. So it's pretty much the same rule. <laughs> I was coaching one day, hot summer day, and my best player, Luca, four years old, he comes up to me and he's like, coach, I'm so hungry, what are you eating? I was like, I'm eating peanuts, Luca. And he's like, oh, I've never had a peanut before. So I said, Luca, eat some peanuts. I gave him some peanuts and then his face started swelling up and then he just looked at me and he's like, I'm allergic. So I turned to my assistant coach and I told her to go get the EpiPen. If you're not familiar with how an EpiPen works, there's a yellow side that has a needle and then there's a blue side where you're supposed to put your thumb. My assistant coach put her thumb on the yellow side, stabbed Luca with the blue side. All the Epi, which I don't know what it's short for. Epinephrine? Thank you, I only look like a doctor. <laughs> All the epinephrine went into my assistant coach's finger and she started jiggling. <laughs> Luca didn't make it. <laughs> to practice the next day. I saved his life. I sucked all the epinephrine out of my assistant coach's finger and then I spit it in Luca's mouth. <laughs> After five minutes when that didn't work, I decided to use the second EpiPen. <laughs> I've been traveling a lot. I just went to Kansas. If you've never been to Kansas, go to the optometrist. 
put your head up against that machine that puffs air in your eye, where you see green on one side, green on the other, and then a barn really far away? That's Kansas. I was performing at one of these barns, and I uh, asked somebody, I asked somebody in the audience, I was like, hey, what do you guys do for fun around here? And dead serious, he went, uh, sometimes we go behind the Subway restaurant and we drink. <laughs> First of all, red flag, he called it a Subway restaurant. <laughs> I had a follow-up question. I was like, why do you do that? And he's like, I don't know. It's just nice to smell the bread. I'm like, that's the saddest thing <laughs> I've ever heard. I was there, I went to a Target. If you're cool, what do you call Target? Who knows? Target, Target exactly. You make anything sound French, it's 100 times cooler. Let me give you an example. Hey, tonight, tonight I'm staying at the Motel 6. Oh, you're poor, that sounds awful. Let's Frenchitize it. Hey, tonight, I'm staying at the Chateau de Sace. Oh, <laughs> fuck. You're getting laid at a Chateau de Sace. So I was in the Target and I pulled into a checkout line. All of a sudden this lady came up behind me, tapped me on the shoulder and she said, excuse me, I was about to pay. Before I could say anything, I was just gonna move out of the way. But then she said, how stupid are you? Then she said, how stupid are your people? And that's what made me freeze. I was just standing there now and she just starts yelling at me. Two minutes have gone by, two minutes of a random person yelling at you in a public place is a long, long, time. People in Target have stopped what they're doing and have formed a little UFC ring around this lady and I. <laughs> and I haven't said a single word to her yet. I was waiting for the right opportunity and she gave it to me. She goes, so what do you have to say for yourself? I paused. I looked her dead in the eyes and I went, I'm sorry. <laughs> She ended up paying for my stuff. <laughs> but I was buying AirPods, so she really didn't understand the whole me being deaf thing. <laughs> she walked me out of the store. She was apologizing. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to do that to you. I just gave her a big hug and I said, how stupid are you? <laughs> One more thing and then I'm out of here. You guys have been so much fun. I really appreciate you guys being here for this on a beautiful Saturday night here in Las Vegas. Um, this club is incredibly special to me personally. I met Jerry Seinfeld here 2019 in September. It was one of the best nights of my life in my comedy career. It was uh, unexpected. He was coming into the club to do a guest spot that night. A guest spot is a short set, unexpected, unannounced. And uh, it was one of the best nights ever. We had a host. Then we had Seinfeld, and then I had to follow him. And <laughs> as a comedian, I know it sounds daunting, but it's what we live for. That's the rush, is to be able to follow a guy like that. And I'm really excited to say he's here tonight. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Jerry Seinfeld, everybody! <laughs> stupid are you people? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful night. You guys are great. Thank you guys so much. I really mean it.